Wicked Game by Chris Isaac. Really great, great tune. It's really the same three chords over and over again, but what you're doing on top of that uh, changes a lot. It makes for a, a pretty indelible riff. Um, and I've used some special effects here. Detuning, you can do that or not, but I will explain what I'm doing as I go through this. So what I'm doing right away is I start with the, with the B string to tune just a little bit. And then as I play the first, the first bass note, then I bring it back up to pitch. So that's what I'm doing is I'm going. And that's if I'm doing a bit, if you're not doing the back beat, you can just tune that up. play that first bass note in the A. Or if you're doing the backbeat, like that. But I basically just start just, you know, just a little, a little bit flat and then tune it up. And I have to check my tuning again, of course. So that's what I'm doing at the intro. And then the rest of the intro is basically it's going between uh, that B, A, and E. So, and I'm doing this hammer on. That slide is very important. And once again, I'm detuning. Now over the E bass, so. Like that. While playing the E with my right hand on the open string, I'm tuning up the B string, bring it down and then up again. And playing as I did in the beginning, then going to the B bass note and this hammer on. Yep, then we're into the verse. And check my tuning now. It does take some practice to get just the right amount uh, of twist there if you want to do that. And then we're into the main riff, and this is what everyone knows, this riff here. The main thing is just to um, let every note ring out as long as possible. And I'll voice it in a certain way, so really take advantage of open strings. So I'm pulling off there, playing, playing the A, playing the A there, and then having the open B string as well as the fretted B here. So without the back beat. And once again, I've got fretted B to an open B just to have that ring out again. I'll play this once more. I'll play it slowly. Okay, then we're into the verse. And again, it's the same chord progression. It's always B to A to E. And I'll, I'll do it without the back beat. line to make sure to really stick that out and it's a pretty spare arrangement pretty sparse not a lot of other chord tones and for this first one I really just wanted to focus just on the melody and the bass note and this little riff the just um, E suspended the resolving E major happens a lot in the song now the second line of the verse got a slide up here to the seventh fret and it's pretty fast what I like doing is fretting the B here with my index finger and then on the seventh fret playing the B with my middle finger so it can slide over like this so I can switch fingers and get it there quickly quicker let me go up an octave I have, 
I have just a little support for that last note, this third, and I and I like fretting that at the seventh fret on both the B and E strings and hammering on the E, just to give it just a little bit of flavor. Then once again harmonizing the last note with a, with a third. Okay, then we're into the chorus, and what I'm doing is here I. I'm using harmonics um, to sort of replicate Chris Isaac's falsetto. And the first time through, I do it right on the beat. So on four, I'm doing a 12th fret harmonic on the B string. And seventh fret, then the seventh fret um, on the E string, the B there. And on both the G and the B strings, the seventh fret hitting that harmonic and you want to let that ring out as long as possible what I'm doing I'm shifting after the first B here and I'm moving to this B here while those keep ringing out so make sure your hand doesn't get in the way doing a pull off there Sort of a background vocal. Da, 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 da. So it's pretty quiet. It's a nice bit of motion to have, but it's pretty quiet. So once again, I'll do that. I don't bring it out too much. It's just kind of there in the background. Second time I do the harmonics. I'm anticipating it a little bit. I just found it to be a nice way to kind of cover, kind of go between bars. Okay, so hitting the hitting the twelfth fret now earlier, a little earlier than four. One, two, three, and the three end. On four, I'm hitting the B, so it's early. The B of the next next measure, B, and then. On the one, I'm hitting those harmonics, so finishing the bar before. And I, I like hitting them slightly separate. You could also just hit them totally together, but I like hitting it a little separate. Same thing then, going on the second fret. open E string. Now you also have the fretted E on the B string just to let it ring out a little bit more. And if you can, when you hit these next notes, try to let that E ring out. Just to, again, to enhance the flavor, flavor of it all. Okay, another case where you want it to ring out as long as possible. then start before you get back to the, the main riff. Don't bar it right away, just hit that bass note until you need to do it. Just let it ring out. Okay, that main riff again. I uh, won't go through that again, but the second time now when I'm doing it, I'm harmonizing um, the very last bit. verse is down an octave. It's as low as we can go here. Uh, Chris Isaac is fixing very low, so... When you're down here and you have a bass note very close to your melody note, make sure to just bring that out as long as possible. I, I like picking closer to the bridge, just to get as much tre treble in there as I can. Now with a little 
little harmony. And that little riff, dream of you, you. I'm hammering on that A. So I'm playing the B, hammering on the A, and pulling it off to that G sharp. It's hard to get it, because uh, I usually use my pinky. It's hard to get it super loud, but try to bring it out. You also could just play it like that. Dream of you, or just dream of you, or dream of you. But I like this. Or here we're harmonizing this. To go into the verse, or the chorus. that B ring out as long as possible. So instead of harmonics, we're just doing these notes down here, naturally fretted, but ring out as long as possible. The rest of it is the same. this short kind of solo and do detuning again. So what I'm doing is I'm finishing it, hit hitting the open B string. And what I'm actually doing, what I did in the video was I actually brought it all the way down, played a couple fretted notes and then bring it back up. So. actually leave it down there and you want to if you're going to do that make sure you cut it off you don't want to ring now it's out of tune you don't want to be hitting that so so just do it just long enough to hear it and cut it off while you do that and bring it back up you know, pretty tricky sequence so Bring it back up while you play your open E string. Before you play the next note then. So once again. Like that. So you just gotta have to bring it back to pitch again. <laughs> so kind of a tricky sequence and a little scary because you can get yourself totally out of tune. But if you get to know the how far to turn it, it can be pretty, a pretty cool effect. So after that little solo then, uh, we go back to the main riff. As, as, as before. Okay, then we're in the last verse, and here we're harmonizing it completely. Mainly with thirds. And this might be the hardest move in this song that then sliding up quickly to the seventh fret playing the B on the seventh fret D on the, D on the G string on the seventh fret F sharp on the seventh fret of the B string so so it's a pretty quick move and up an octave now harmonizing isn't a sixth as the other ones are, it's the fifth. Then I'm doing the harmonics again. And once again, anticipating on the second. And I'll do this one with a backbeat. Now we're into the, what, I, what I'm calling the pre-verse, the main riff. And 
again, the second one harmonizing there on the sixth. Now here, we're at the very end of the song, and what I'm doing over the bass note, I'm again doing the detuning. For the, oops, <laughs> I detuned my E string accidentally. Yeah, so after that, hitting the E string. Okay, bring your B string down and up again. Doing the back beat, and once again, hitting the B, bass note, open B string, and that hammer on there, letting that ring, and then you're doing this final riff, which is out of, well, the final little melody, which is out of time, there's no time here. And you want this to be very smooth, and it's a harmonized vocal, so make sure both parts of the harmony are strong. Make sure there's a very legato. It's sung very, very, uh, how to say it, very, uh, it's, it's very legato and also very, very free, very indefinite. So if you can try to replicate that, it's very effective. And ending with a big E major chord. All right, hope this is useful to you. Thanks for watching.